Hi everybody, old guy here, and this is the uh, trilogy we're talking about today. I picked it up, oh, somewhere, not quite sure where. Uh, probably on one of my uh, book hauls. Uh, and uh, I did so because it's uh, Anthony Burgess, and he is the classic postmodern writer because, well, he wrote in postmodern times. A Clockwork Orange is probably his uh, best work, best known work, and uh, really, I'll bet you would be hard pressed to name any others. I mean, let's look at how many he's actually written here. My goodness. But anyway, uh, like I said, I'll bet you're hard-pressed to name any other novels that uh, he's written. Maybe the Enderby series, which I have not read. But he still had the reputation. I mean, it's a Burgess novel. So when I saw this, I snapped it up. And this is pretty good. So, the Malayan trilogy consists of three novels. Time for a Tiger. The Enemy in the Blanket, Beds in the East. They all have a continuing character, uh, the rather befuddled Victor Crabb. A history teacher in the British service who's been posted to uh, Malaysia. Crabb is a bit of a tragic figure. Uh, he had an accident in which his beloved first wife drowned, and ever since he cannot drive, nor can he swim. This sainted wife is his one true love. Uh, definitely not his second wife, Fenella, who Crabbe married, as he said, to quieten my nerves. Which I suppose is as good a reason as any. Except Crabbe is uh, not invested in this marriage at all. Uh, his, he has affairs across the peninsula. Um, just you know, out drinking with the boys pretty much all the time. And Fenella herself was not thrilled with this Malaysian posting, but went along because she is the dutiful British overseas wife. Until she's not. Each of the novels has another character who's actually the central one, with Crab somehow appearing and taking over the story. The first one opens with the rather delightful British police lieutenant, Nabby Adams, who will do anything for a drink. I mean anything. He is so profoundly an alcoholic that he cannot sit up from bed without a beer or something else to get him started. Not to mention how much al alcohol he needs uh, to function throughout the day. Adams owns hundreds, if not thousands of dollars or pounds to the several Chinese, Tamil, and Malaysian shops where he runs tabs and is on the verge of getting cut off from his various elixirs of life. So he comes up with a scheme to sell a car to Crab and split the proceeds with him, thereby reducing one of Adam's bills and allowing him to continue drinking. But Crab doesn't drive, so uh, what are we to do? Enter Aladad Khan, Nabi's sidekick who has a crush on Fenella and is more than willing to serve as the Crab's driver when he's not on police duty. What ensues is a Keystone Cops series of adventures, not all of them comic, involving the four and several others, culminating in a communist ambush of the car, and Adam's fortuitous salvation. In the second novel, uh, The Enemy in the Bed, Crab is now the headmaster of a school in another province, and Fenella has traded up for a Malaysian prince while Crab is chasing Anne Talbot, uh, the wife of a colleague. Or she's chasing him. I mean, you decide. Everybody is rather civilized about the whole thing. 
Rupert Hardman, an English lawyer who abandoned a very lucrative position in a Hong Kong office because of ethics issues. Lawyer with ethics. <laughs> Better take a photo and post it alongside those Yeti sightings. Hardman is running out of money and hits on a, a scheme to marry the formidable Malay beauty Norma. Her two previous rich husbands, an Englishman and a Dutchman, murdered by, as Burgess puts it, communist bullets that had rendered her twice a widow, had merely anticipated in a single violent instant what attrition would more subtly have achieved. Which is Burgess's deadpan way of describing Norma's extreme behavior. There were rumors that both husbands were about to go to Europe and forget Norma because a, Malay, because a Malay Muslim marriage wasn't recognized there and, well, the commies happened to show up. Well, Hardman, Hardman is unfortunately thinking the same thing, that he can marry Norma, obtain the funds he needs to finance his lifestyle, and then hie off to England in its de facto divorce. But he has no idea who he is dealing with. No idea at all. In Beds in the East, Crabb is winding down his position as Chief Education Officer of the fictional Malay state where he resides as looming Malayan independence displaces him. Fenella has returned to England, where she starts a rather celebrated poetic career, the implications being that Crabbe suppressed her talent, something Crabbe finds out when he reads one of her poems that pretty much says just that. While upriver, Crabbe runs into an old school colleague who tells him things about his first wife that shatters the torch he's been carrying. Then something happens to Crabbe. You can decide what. In the third one, there are two central characters. Uh, Rosemary, the beautiful Tamil party girl, who is desperate to marry an Englishman and live in London. And Robert Lou, a high-functioning autistic who can compose music to rival Beethoven. Rosemary's plans go awry, as one would expect, and Crabbe tries to help Lou when he runs smack into the middle of the Americans who are taking over as the English leave and who have other ideas about grand music. Throughout all three novels are bucket loads of side characters who range from the hilarious to the terrifying. All of them Burgess's construction of the various ethnic groups trying to mesh as a nation. Is it stereotyped? Oh, <laughs> you betcha! Uh, but the characters are well drawn, and you can't help liking most of them. My personal favorites are the two Malayan construction workers who have nothing good to say about any of the other races, and who daily plot murder. They pop up in the most unusual places, providing color commentary, and never quite fulfilling their intents. There's also an air of white man's burden throughout the trilogy, some of it intentional and Burgess's attempt to show how silly it is, but sometimes he falls right into it. It's a good novel. I mean, I liked it. Uh, and if you're interested in the time period and the events, good, because it, they, was, they are described by someone who was there. Fairly funny, too. So there's that aspect. But I'll tell you, it does feel rather dated. Old guy here. See you later.